Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, a friend of mine was recently saying, "Hey, if, if uh, you know, it, kind of lamenting the state of the comic industry." I was saying, if people didn't write in asking you questions, would you even have anything to talk about? The answer is, well, of course. These questions are all fake. I'm making them up. So you know, clearly, I, I have plenty to talk about because uh, none of these are real. I'm just. It's funny the, <laughs> um, the critics of this channel. Uh, no, of course, letters are real. Um, but people often uh, throw shade at the channel and they'll say things to me, the weirdest, um, kind of insults like, Hey, Perch doesn't have a million subscribers. That, that is true. That, that is, that is wholeheartedly true. Or Perch, uh, doesn't actually Perch, they're fake letters. Um, why? Like what, what, <laughs> what's the logic behind that? Um, it's very strange to me. Anyway, um, time for another fake letter. It says, uh, is editorial tinkering sandbagging careers is is editorial tinkering basically sandbagging careers so it says uh hey perch i keep hearing rumors about creators turning down work on certain big two titles such as x-men and batman because the titles aren't the spotlight they once were and it got me wondering if maybe there's more to it than that um there is more to it than that by the way um i remember there being a backlash against nick spencer during his amazing spider-man run for not getting MJ and Peter back together. I don't know why, by the way. Why would people be bitching at Nick Spencer over that? Because he he did more to actually get them back together. I mean, Spencer did, in my view, hero's work of undoing that, that god-awful Sins Past storyline. And um, he had them dating. I mean, like, Nick Spencer had him back in an almost healthy relationship with Peter about to pop the question to MJ. Like, all that stuff is good and normal. Um, I, I think... That wasn't Spencer. Uh, but anyway, um, it says, now in retrospect, we know that there was editorial decision and his intent was to restore the marriage. But didn't matter at the time. The narrative was Nick hates longtime Spidey fans. I don't think there was that much of that, to be honest. I think a lot of people looked at that. and I mean, I, I you know, there are people who bitch about everything. But I think um, most people were fair in uh, looking at Nick Spencer and, and, uh, and, and appreciating what he was doing. I think, well, I think, I think that came through, but, um, but anyway, uh, we keep going. It says, my question for you is twofold. Do you believe creator careers are being irreparably damaged by poor editorial choices? And if so, do you think creators are deliberately avoiding certain titles and group editors for this reason? All right. Complicated question a little bit. So we'll break it out into little pieces. Um, there is, and has been for a little while now, the um, at least the concern on the part of creators that um, you know basically uh, you know editorial would not allow them to do the comic they wanted to do, and as a result, the comic would not be as good. And furthermore, um, it would uh, you know basically that they would do better off have strong careers if they were in charge of their own decisions. And then being you know, closely attached to that, they would make more money basically by being in charge of their own decisions. And if they were going to make a kind of a low writer pay rate at the big two, or, you know, take life into their own hands, take some risk and do their own thing, you know, maybe both of them are going to get paid about the same, but at least, you know, you have more control over your own life and you have the upside. If, you know, for whatever reason, your, your title did go well, you did get optioned. It did become a big Hollywood. We, all that kind of stuff, the value would be solely in your hands rather than, uh, sitting in the hands of someone else. So, you know, for that's the major reason why a lot of creators are avoiding the big two. They just don't want the interference. They don't want the nonsense. They, in, in many cases, by the way, I, I did this video a while back and it got some attention. It got a lot of attention from people inside of comics with very little attention from you, the fans. But I'll repeat the premise of it here is that one of the most irritating, aggravating, common things that almost every creator has experienced is the editor, the publisher, the company, not getting back to them in a timely manner, basically having absolutely horrifying email skills, which is one reason why I'm going to be a great publisher, because I also have horrifying email skills. Uh, but anyway, uh, but, but the, you know, a lot of really top creators who pitch things to the big two and months or years go by without people even reading stuff and and there have been some absolutely killer huge ideas that have gone out not just in my opinion but clearly good ideas 
that publishers have sat on and sat on and sat on and sat on to their death. Basically, a creator either got involved in something else, didn't bother by the time the publisher finally got back to them, the creator moved on. There's been a lot of examples of that. And so in many cases, if you've been the victim of that, if you've ever been a creator who has a good idea or, you know, really has some enthusiasm for a comic and you, you're, you know, your, your email and your calls and everything else go into limbo at the publisher, then, you know, once you've taken the step to take your destiny into your own hands, basically do your own comic, you're done. You don't come back. You're just fucking sick of it. And, and it like, it, 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 it like leaves a black spot on your soul where you just refuse to put yourself in that situation again. And that's, uh, that's common, unfortunately, in comics where a lot of the people are on the outside. Once you've been burned that way, it feels very personal. For a lot of fans, I suspect it feels like how you feel when you've been collecting comics for a very long time and then the creator on the comic that you've collected for a long time uh, suddenly turns on you, calls you, you know, a Nazi or whatever, blocks you. It is that same personal gut feel as when a creator has a great idea and basically the publisher, their editor, the person who's supposed to be paying them and getting the idea out, blows them off, never talks to them, can't get back to them, says, oh yeah, I'll call you next week, and it doesn't. It, it has a similar personal feel. Now you can take that and think about it any way you want, um, but for a lot of fans who are like, yeah, the creators need a taste of this medicine, they're actually getting that taste. It's different. You know, it's not like a slur like being called a Nazi, which is personal and, and shitty and bad, but it is that same feeling of, you know, hard rejection and bad behavior that burns you up inside. And so there's, there's a decent amount of creators who do not work for the big two and will not go work for, you know, certain, certain companies and definitely certain editors because of this. I mean, point blank, I know multiple creators who will not work for Jordan White. Well, and Jordan White, by the way, is generally a cheerful, fun guy. He's got a little ukulele, and he's a he's a happy-go-lucky kind of cheerful guy. But I know some creators who will never go work for that guy. Same thing with Chris Conroy. There's there's some who will just never ever work for him for this reason. It's uh, they'd rather make less money doing their own thing than put themselves back into where they you know they they feel like it's they're being not victimized. That's too strong a word, but basically they're they're at the mercy of this guy who won't return their calls and is not interested in that. So I think that's, um, that's a big piece of it. Um, in terms of, you know, editorial sandbagging careers, I, I don't know how, I don't know that much of that is going on. And what I mean by that is if you are say Tom King and editorial is there doing things, does editorial interference actually hurt your career? It can, but, there's just so there's been so many instances where people know editorial screwing things up, like the Nick Spencer situation with Spider-Man. And I, I think, uh, you know, now when something really dumb happens in a comic, there's almost an assumption it was the editor, not the, the writer. Um, and there's at least one writer who I mentioned earlier in this video um, who takes advantage of that fact, who does dumb things and blames it on the editor. And, uh, you know, why am I? I mean, it's Tom King. Um, who who's, uh, has at different times when a decision has gone bad blames editorial when it was him. You know, I, I by the way, this could, I, I definitely will get a call uh, after this video. Like, somebody, like no, that's not true. Uh, yeah, but the receipts prove it. Sorry. Um, anyway, I, I definitely think if you're a creator, you should not, um, you know, you, you should not uh, bounce between if the idea works out and is good, it was all your idea. And if the idea was bad, oh, it was all. That's some definite BS, and, and definitely some people have played that game. Um, but overall, look, I, I think um, editorial, and, and in particular bad editorial, or editorial doesn't get back to people, or, you know, cases, another one where I've had some, some uh, pretty big arguments. But, it, but again, it's true. I've, I've seen the emails. So, I mean, yes, I guess a writer for a comic could have completely fabricated an email and showed it to me as gross negligence, but I've just seen too many of them. It, it's not likely. Um, but, but cases where editors will tell creators, Hey, your comic is selling amazing. It's, it's selling, you know, quarter of a million copies and it's definitely not. And then eventually the creator figures this out and then get very, very bitter about it. I mean, look, uh, one, I, I will, you know, maintain confidentiality for this one. 
But there's one writer in particular who has been a almost constant source of YouTube videos and people crapping on this writer for the last five years. And often with good reason, by the way. You know, stories, not great. Social media attitude, abysmal. But uh, this creator has also been jerked around by editorial. And, uh, you know, you, you can... It, 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 it's, it's not like you get... It's not like there's. I have sympathy. Um, but you can kind of... Uh, you can understand the behavior. Put this way, a little bit better when you... Um, realize some of the things that this person has been told, right? You, you just can, you can kind of understand, you know, oh, this is why the person was a raging narcissist lunatic. I, okay, I get it now. Okay, again, doesn't make it okay, but you can understand the origin point a lot better um, as a result. Anyway, hope that answered your question. Um, anyway, I, I still maintain, and I've, I've done, I've said this before, I've done videos on this before, a lot of attention goes to the creators, and often rightfully so, about kind of dumb things that go on. Um, but editorial, when wielded badly, to me is far more destructive, in my opinion. Not as sexy. Definitely not as sexy as complaining about a writer or an artist and, and totally get why. But the editor is often making decisions that can absolutely tank a book faster than anything else. And, um, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.